Left ventricular hypertrophy, or LVH, is an increase in the mass of the left ventricle. This increase in mass is secondary to an increase in wall thickness, but it can also be due to an increase in ventricular cavity size or can occur due to both, depending upon the underlying pathology. So what are the causes that lead to LVH? LVH is usually caused by long-term pressure overload, volume overload states, or combinations of pressure and volume overload. Uncommonly, there is a genetic component as well. Most commonly, a chronic increase in afterload is the common pathophysiology leading to an increase in LV mass. Diseases that commonly can result in LVH include systemic hypertension, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, ventricular septal defect, and some infiltrative cardiac processes, for example, Fabry disease and Danon disease. Additionally, some other infiltrative cardiac processes can also lead to increased LV wall thickness, but without associated LVH on the ECG. These diseases include amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and hemochromatosis. Pathology The pathologic mechanism behind LVH is a significant increase in the number and, or size, of sarcomeres within each myocardial cell. Now, let's come to ECG changes observed in LVH. LVH and related changes can produce five major electrocardiographic findings. These are increased QRS voltage, increased duration of QRS complex, left axis deviation, repolarization, RST and T wave changes, and fifth is left atrial abnormality. The ECG diagnosis of LVH is quite reliable when very prominent voltage is seen in conjunction with left atrial and STT wave abnormalities, leftward deviated cardiac axis, or widening of the QRS. Generally, however, only some of the many ECG findings will be present. Several different ECG criteria for the diagnosis of LVH have been developed, all with their advantages and disadvantages. None are ideal. The most commonly used is the Sokolov Lion criterion. We have a separate video on ECG criteria of LVH, the link of which is given in the description below, and you can also see the link in the right upper screen as well. There are some pitfalls in the LVH diagnosis based on ECG as well. Patients with LVH may fail to show voltage criteria, especially if they have only mild hypertrophy or if there is an underlying obstructive lung disease. The sensitivity is also reduced in females and in obese patients. The right bundle branch block, when associated with decreased S waves in leads V1 and V2, may also decrease the sensitivity of some voltage criteria for LVH. In contrast, the increased ECG voltage without LVH is a common normal variant, particularly in young adult males and in athletes. The procedure of choice for diagnosing LVH is echocardiography, given its widespread availability, ease of use, and lack of radiation. Echocardiography can also permit quantitation of LV mass, including the severity of LVH, and give important information about the etiology of LVH, such as aortic or mitral valve disease or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. However, echocardiography may be non-diagnostic in patients with suboptimal acoustic windows. In such instances, cardiac magnetic resonance imaging is a reasonable alternative, although CMR is not universally available. So, what are the complications of LVH if it is left untreated? Since continuous pressure or volume overload may remain in a compensatory phase, patients with LVH remain asymptomatic for a few years. But as the disease progresses, it will lead to the development of systolic or diastolic dysfunction and end-stage heart failure. Increased myocardial oxygen demand occurs with hypertrophy and thus may result in angina or ischemic symptoms. Also, LVH predisposes to arrhythmias because hypertrophied cardiac muscle disrupts normal conduction. This predisposes to atrial fibrillation, which may lead to ischemic stroke. Management of LVH Patients with LVH from any cause are at increased risk for major cardiovascular complications. 
LVH itself is not a disease, but is a manifestation of the disease, therefore it is not a target of therapy. And thus, the treatment of patients with LVH is directed at the diagnosis of the relevant causative disease and its treatment. Such as antihypertensive medications, if the cause is hypertension, valve replacement or repair in aortic stenosis, etc. How the patient with LVH should be followed up. Serial monitoring of ECG voltage also may be helpful. In particular, changes in ECG voltage and repolarization abnormalities over time may reflect changes in LV mass and correlate with cardiovascular risk. For example, regression of LVH may reflect effective antihypertensive therapy. However, loss of LVH voltage criteria may also be due to alterations in lead placement or to factors that may be associated with falsely decreased QRS voltage, such as anisarca, pleural or pericardial effusion, weight gain, and increased severity of the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So a clinical correlation in the interpretation of ECG is important. For a definitive assessment of the regression of LVH, echocardiography is the most accurate. And this is it for this video. Thank you for watching.